There was an orphan called Dick Whittington. He was so poor, he had to survive on scraps of food thrown from the windows of passing coaches. One day, he stopped a passing wagon. Is it true, sir, the streets of London are paved with gold? More like chewing gum and hamburger wrappers, if you ask me, mate. In that case, I will take me to London. I could start a privatized street cleaning company. So he jumped aboard, and some time later, he arrived in ye olde parish of London. And indeed, ye streets were not paved with gold, nor silver, but with ye muddy brown. And ye streets stuck to high heaven, and ye laddie Whittington passed out in the doorway. morning, he was awoken by the comforting feel of a boot up the bottom. The owner of the boot was the cook, an old witch. If you're filthy, buddy, off my filthy step, she screamed, or you'll be in the pot for supper. But I need some food, begged Dick. Then you've come to the wrong person. I'm a cook. Now clear off before I have your guts for garters. Just at that moment, fate took a hand and a leg in the person of the house owner, Mr. Fitzlightly. Go back to your pots and pans, you old witch. I will find some employment for the boy, he said kindly. And so it was that Dick was found jobs around the house for a generous wage of one P a week. But all day long, the witch scolded him so much that Mr. Fitzlightly's daughter, Alice, told her father how cruel the cook was being. And her cooking is terrible. The witch was told by the master, but it made little difference. Dick's life was a misery. Even at night, he could get no sleep because rats and mice ran all over his bed. I need a cat, he said, after another sleepless night. I could rent you mine for a penny a week. She's a good master. And she certainly was because they had rat and mouse pie almost every day. So Dick agreed to the onerous terms of the contract. The cat did an excellent job and became very attached to Dick, who was much kinder to her than the witch. Now, it came to the ears, eyes and teeth of Dick Whittington that his master's ship was about to sail and all his servants were allowed to give the captain something to sell. Alice persuaded Dick to send the cat. He reluctantly agreed. At the same time, keeping his intentions from the ears, eyes, and teeth of the witch, who was, let's face it, the rightful owner. The cat was smuggled aboard, heavily dosed with seasick pills. It sailed away towards the Spice Islands. The witch, who never used spice in her cooking, inquired one day how the cat was. Oh, she's gone for a swim, said Dick feebly. Well, Dick Feebly, you'd better go and find her, or you'll be in the pot tonight. <laughs> Dick was so worried that he decided to run away. 
As he left London, the bells of Bow Church suddenly rang out. Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Me? A humble lad? Mayor of London? I'd better return to the master at once. Perhaps he has some good news for me. Where's my cat, you filthy urchin? If he's lost, I shall boil you up with mouse tails and rat's heads. <laughs> you do no such thing, boomed the voice of the master. Mr. Whittington, please be kind enough to come to my study. I have some wonderful news for you. The master told him how the cat had arrived safely in the Spice Island, where the king was so impressed with its skills as a mouser that he had bought it for a chest of precious jewels. These are for you, and the cat had kittens. So one of them is also for you. Alice wasted no time in marrying Dick Whittington. And Mr. Fitz Lightly wasted no time in booting out the witch who got a job as a cook at a prison. The Home Secretary's answer to the prison population was so at a stroke. As for Dick Whittington, he did become mayor of London three times. He set up a privatized street cleaning agency and soon found his pockets were paid with gold. A strange coincidence that excited the interest of the district auditor.